The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Good morning and welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm CJ and my co-host Chip is en route from City Hall, again causing drama and trauma. Uh, I guess he got into a fight this morning at the IAC meeting uh, with Kathy Ann Viveris and Lupa Chico uh, and they ended up joining the meeting. Uh, let's get right into the, the news of the day, the news of the week. Um, obviously, City Council meeting last night and we have to look at some issues. Number one, uh, it was very interesting to see how the city council, uh, in dealing with this uh, citizens' input uh, potential ordinance, uh, started moving around and changing things about. Uh, it was kind of interesting to see, uh, and was definitely uh, a way. I mean, already uh, city council president Joe Camaro wanted to change it, and Kath, uh, Linda uh, Pereira, Linda Pereira, decided, hey, you know what? Let's move it to a different day. We'll have finance and citizens put on a different day, and then we'll have the city council meeting on the same day. Uh, that might be a good idea. Uh, my co-host, Chip Camara, he has said numerous times that we should have one meeting a month, which is in the city council chamber, where the city council is present, where the citizens can come in and just say their piece. Uh, I have to... Uh, applaud the people that presented last night uh, in Citizens Input Time. It was very civil. Uh, decorum was maintained. Uh, Councillor Rigo also said the same thing. But did any of you notice who may have been watching that council meeting? All of them, all of them, except for maybe Councillor Long, look kind of nervous there. Uh, you know, they know their seat isn't guaranteed, and that's a big problem for the people uh, in those council seats. They are realizing that the people of Fall River are beginning to mobilize. A revolution has begun. And, um, you know, I read a letter to the editor today uh, in regards to that, uh, not necessarily in regards to that, but in, in regards to how we've disrespected the former Mayor Flanagan. Um, his support is still run rampant, and, you know, that's history. That's the way it is. Um, but with the potential of him running again for mayor, uh, could Fall River again make history um, re-electing someone they fired? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. And I don't know what to think about it. Um, let's look at the CPA. Do you remember that tax you nitwits voted in? That 1.5% on the property taxes for the quote-unquote preservation of historic properties and venues? Um, did any of you look at the list of the awards? $192,000 to the Children's Museum, because it's going to be matched by somebody else, um, for an air conditioner? $400,000 for an air conditioner? Are you serious? We don't even own the building. But we're going to give them $400,000. Well, we're giving them two. 192000 and then somebody's going to match it, probably the state. So, again, if that's the case, yes, we are giving $400,000. You know, I'm all for comfort. I'm all for, you know, especially in our climate, because uh, when we get hot, we get hot. Uh, but $192,000? $100,000 for the Lafayette Durfee House? You know, I said when they were trying to pass this tax, and by the way, we're stuck with it for five years, um, that it was going to be used to improve properties which are privately held. So your tax dollars are going to be used to improve the value of private properties. Now, they did have an expense for um, the Oak Grove Cemetery Arch, which, you know, that's okay. God knows we have to fix a gate because... The dead might try to escape Fall River. Hell, the living are trying to do it now. 
So uh, we're definitely uh, looking at, at a potential. And um, I just noticed that uh, a miscreant from city government has decided to join us here in the studio. So I have to ask myself, um, what's going on here? So let's find out. Hey, Chip, you with us? But, uh, uh, we had a, I had a meeting at the, uh, the Taj Mahal, uh, <laughs> or also known as the uh, Fall River Government Center, and uh, it ran a little late. Even though I was scheduled to leave early to be here, uh, they decided to bring in uh, the chief of staff and the city administrator to talk about a few things, and of course, the, we digressed and began to talk about <laughs> about what's going on in the city but it was very very interesting and I'm glad I stayed because I have a few I have a few quotes that um, this is exact quotes of what was said about what they're attempting to do and we can was we, this from I'm Lou I would not live in this bleep hole well from <laughs> from yeah from actually from both oh well there you go um, <laughs> They talked about the, okay, here we are, sorry. Um, a quote, the mayor wants to get to an honest, sustainable budget. And Kathy Ann then chimed in, we wanna, we have structural problems in the budget. Well, uh, those are euphemisms if I've ever seen them because the structural problem that we have in the budget is we spend money we don't have. That's a pretty bad structural problem. It's like building a building uh, with no supports. Um, you know, and they've identified that problem and this is what we want. We want an honest, sustainable budget. And then, they took, then we got into a pretty spirited uh, discussion. Uh, and uh, you know, the reality is I, I, I take serious objection to the way they're doing this. Um, and I also take objections to the fact that they don't want to talk about the past. It's their thing. I don't want to talk about the past. I don't want to talk about what happened, in, in, you know, in the past. Uh, it's not our fault. Well, you're right. It's not your fault, but it's reality. You know, the first thing you have to do is deal with reality. This is what we got. But if we don't know how we got here, how can we make sure we don't continue on the same path? But they don't want to deal with, with, with uh, you know, the, they don't want to talk about the past because when we talk about the past, we will have to talk about the nonfeasance, malfeasance, and misfeasance of all the government officials in this community for decades. The fact is that, and it was funny because they, they, they referred to, and CJ, I don't know if you've heard this before. They, it, during our conversation, they said that, you know, the problem with the city is we used to live on magic money. Oh, it's magic. Magic money. And that was what they, that was the expression they, they coined for, the, for grant money and, and money they got these one time one of you know these these short-term money that they actually plugged into a budget oh safer and, grant money yes yeah, safe, <laughs> safer grant money uh you know uh windfalls or you know uh but you know and supposedly this came from another another politician who said well you know we've always managed to find magic money you know to plug up the gaps well the problem is Magic money sometimes disappears because that's what magicians do. They make things disappear. And sometimes they don't reappear. And now when we have a budget, and I made that point very clear, that we took money from essential services and funded them with magic money and took that money and urinated it into a hole somewhere and it never came back, we're left with what we've got. And they're saying, well, we're working on this, and you know, after we get this thing semi-stabilized, we're gonna talk about reorganizations, because I mentioned that. Well, my, my problem with that is we should have, one of the first things we should have done is reorganize government, shrink the government. Last night at the council meeting, I said that as the budget stands now, 
there's just about one supervisor to every one and a half firefighters in a fire budget. If they make the cuts that they projected, um, they, it will be eight supervisors for every 10 firefighters. So every firefighter will almost have his own supervisor. You know, we can't have this. There has to be demotions. There has to be people put back on a line. We, we have to, obviously, we're not doing things right when we're laying people off and giving people pink slips and hiring people. They're hiring people in a city of Fall River while we're laying people off. That is an absolute travesty. It's unconscionable to me. Well, you know, Chip, that's because we hire people for city assessor who's not qualified, so we've got to go out and find him an assistant so that he can be get qualified, and then the assistant can do all the work. Uh, by the way, the assistant doesn't come from Fall River. The assistant comes from somewhere out in Mansfield, um, and I'm wondering what the connection is to city government there. Uh, I, this, uh, the, the assistant that was hired obviously has worked for Fall River in the past and has worked elsewhere uh, and may be very qualified, but you know what? We don't have the money. And why couldn't someone else in, that's got a pink slip in city government turn around and say, hey, I'll take that job and then you don't have to pay me unemployment? Because that's the one component the city never talks about. The fact that all of these unemployed workers, we still have to pay for because we're a self-insurer. Yeah, we so have to pay the unemployment compensation. You're right. And the other problem we have is that they don't make, and I, it's, it, ironically enough, at the Insurance Advisory Committee, I did speak to a few union people, and I, I made it known to them, and they were not happy with people being laid off, getting pink slips while people were being hired. Uh, and I told them, I said, you know, it just goes to show the insensitivity and lack of real administrative acumen that the city has. Uh, when I worked for the federal government, uh, when I first was uh, discharged from the military, I worked for the federal government. And when they had what they called rifts, they called those rifts in the federal government, reductions in force. When they had layoffs, because they always, you know, government always makes these, these, uh, these, these euphemisms. They just don't want to say, we're going to lay you off. Well, they're gonna, so they call it a reduction in force, you know. Uh, so what they did was when people were being laid off, they had bumping rights to other, uh, in other words, if they were, let's say they were uh, a top-level electronic system technician and they were going to get, uh, they, were, they were laying them off, they could bump down to the next lower level electronic tech or electronic uh, uh, worker, and you had those, but also they had lateral bumping, and they even, and I, you know, it's amazing when the federal government does something right, but they did. They actually had lateral bumping where people who couldn't get a job but had seniority were actually moved into other positions, and they actually had a, a training period for them. So they could go into these jobs. Now, wouldn't that make more sense in the city of Fall River to take someone who you're going to lay off and pay unemployment to, but hire somebody from, mostly from out of town, to do a job that's open? Why not move that clerk to a clerk in another department or whatever the position is and you know if it's within the scope of their ability level and I'm sure most of these jobs are because in, in, in government if you can't do your job that's not a problem they give you a pay raise and an assistant so that's the way government works but the fact is why aren't these people being moved over laterally into these positions it's it's to me it's it's you know, it's just unconscionable that we are laying people off, we haven't shrunk the size of government, and we're asking for taxes. I agree. We need an honest, sustainable budget. I do agree with that. And I do agree that we have, well, I, I wouldn't use the euphemism structural problems. I would, I would say that the, we have a budget full of bullshit that would be a that would be a that would be a more accurate assessment of the budget because half of it is is based on 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 grants and short term money and things and they can they can bemoan all these fixed costs 
like, oh, the retirement's got up 1.4 million, and I reminded them that the reason, the primary reason is that cities don't fund their share of the retirement costs and didn't do it for years in Fall River. And the answer to that was, from the chief of staff was, oh, no, no cities or towns fund them. Well, guess what? You have a legal and fiduciary responsibility to fund them. And when I pointed out that the retirement systems are supposed to be fully funded by 2010, and the reason they're not is cities won't put in their share, uh, they forget, because cities are really good at that. Stealing money, wasting it, and then making up that what they what they wasted by raising our taxes and implementing new fees. And I'll tell you, um, it was I was really glad. I you know I I'm sorry I was late, but I was really glad that I got this time because I also heard a little whisper when they talked about the layoffs. I heard a little very clandestine whisper that we're going to try not to lay off as many people as we said. Well, you guess what? Why do we have all these numbers being bantered around? Scare tactic. You know, reason for the city council to vote for, to tax us more. Yes, we're going to lay off 100,000 people. We're going to lay off 50,000. Oh, God, we've got to do this. Otherwise, the entire city will be out on the street. Well, uh, I'm a bet man, and I'll, I'll bet anybody around a coffee that uh, they don't lay off as many people as they say they're going to lay off. And by the way, they refused a million dollars offered by the employees uh, to keep people on the payroll. I want to give kudos to the Insurance Advisory Committee. The Insurance Advisory Committee, last year, because we have money in our account because we actually don't spend our money on everything else like they do with their health care money and we keep it in an interest bearing account which is statutorily required we have you know five or six million dollars in that account all the time the city should have 18 but last year in order to keep as much drug coverage as, as we could for our employees and our retirees we paid the entire cost of the Canadian drug plan. We paid the city share. So the city owes us a million bucks. <laughs> or close to a million bucks. Add it to the add it to the ledger. <laughs> interest and interest free. But I have to give kudos to the people in the insurance advisory committee. They offered the city they they're scheduled to pay us back that nine hundred thousand or a million dollars this year. And they volunteered to say, we'll defer that million till next year to allow you to use that million to keep some people on the payroll while you fix the problem. And you know what the city's answer to that was? No. No. <laughs> Let them go to the street. <laughs> their, their, their argument was, and, you know, I understand what they're saying. They said... We want an honest and sustainable budget, and we have, we have been living on, on short-term money too long, and they're right. But this isn't short-term money that we're telling you to plug into the budget forever. It was short-term money we offered you to keep people in this city working while you had one year to begin the fix, and they still said no. I disagree with but that see, position. But you see, Chip, this is what we say. Government is flawed because here's the IAC. These are all people who are no longer, for the most part, tied to the political strings of the administration or any administration. They're people like yourself, you know, John Q. Public. And you say, look, you know what? We're going, we're going to share the sacrifice. Okay, remember, Mr. Mayor, share the sacrifice. Oh, wait, that's right. You use selective sacrifice. You pick and choose what sacrifice you're going to make. But this can't happen anymore. It can't. Our constitutional monarchs are sitting there in City Hall saying to the IAC today, let them eat cake. Okay, I mean, is this really what we want? Is this what you want, Mr. Mayor? Is this what you want, City Council? Do you want a recreation of the French Revolution here in Fall River? 
You see there, they just chopped off their heads. I mean, what's going to happen here? Is this going to become another city that we've seen in recent history where there's rioting and pillaging in the streets? I hope not. But that's what you're creating. Yeah, well, as I said, I, I just don't understand it. I, you know, I understand what they said that, you know, they, they you know, that we've lived too long. On, but this wasn't a safer grant. This is what we're not telling you that, look, we're going to give you this forever. We're saying it's like me telling my, you know, one of my uh, my neighbors, hey, look, you know, I know you don't have a car. Uh, I got a second car. Uh, I will let you, you know, I'll, you know, you can buy this car from me, but you don't have to pay me till you get your job back and, or, you know, until you, you know, I know you're in a fix. It's not forever, but I'm going to give you something because I know you're trying. So we've, you know, we're saying, okay, if you're really trying, why not take this money to keep a few people on a payroll? And we're not asking you to free up $6 million. Are you telling me that your plan is so bad that you can't free up a million bucks by next year? If that's the case, why are we bothering? But no, it's about, we have to be short again so we can raise more fees next year. And that's the key. The key is government, government is a, you know, is under mismanagement in a dictionary, the picture of government is there. Or as Milton Friedman said, Government, the government solution to a problem is usually as bad as the problem. And he also said, I'm in favor of cutting taxes under any circumstances for any excuse or any reason. Because this man understood that the economy is fueled by people with money who can buy things, the free market. But then again, what the hell does he know? I mean, we've got Kenny Fiola from the Office of Economic Destruction and Robert the Messiah Million saying, lower the taxes on the businesses, but raise the taxes on the people. And who the hell is Milton Friedman? He only won the Nobel Prize for Economic Science. Yeah, that, I mean, what, is, what the hell does he know? That gives him no credibility, yeah, none whatsoever. You know I that, mean, Chip. <laughs> how, dare he, how dare he have a, an opinion that contradicts uh, Ken Fiola and Rob Million? Because, you know, they know what's best for the city. Taxes and more taxes and more taxes. Yeah, you know, it, it was just interesting in, in my little citizens input time, which obviously got cut off as did yours because of the three minute rule. I one of the last paragraphs and I did post that uh, online last night was quit the dog and pony show. If you intend on passing this budget anyhow, you know what? Let's cut the dog and pony show. Pass it and move on. You know why? You can, you can expedite the pain. We're already suffering. Let's just end the suffering, pass the budget, and then we know in September and November, you're gone. Because you know what? This is absolutely ridiculous. Uh -huh. Absolutely ridiculous. And you're right. I, you know, you could see, it, you, know, the, you know, the attitude in that city council chamber yesterday was palpable. You could see the outrage of everybody, not only uh, as they were referred to the nutty people, <laughs> but even the non-nutty people, and everybody there and everybody you talk to is, is incensed by what's going on. And I didn't get to read my final quote because I did, I, I basically quoted Friedman because, you know, as I said, this three minute time, and I think that I will be at the ordinance committee meeting to say it should be moved up to five because it takes you a minute to, to say, Mr. President, uh, counselors, my name is, and I live at, right. you know, and basically begin your presentation. You don't have time. I virtually nobody with a presentation uh, that had any kind of facts or thing that they wanted to present got to finish it. Well, you know, because they don't want to hear the facts. As I said, you want plausible deniability. This well, is what they do. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, this is this is the great. I was going to close because. In order to keep from crying with our city council, you have to laugh. That's right. So I figured the best way to close last night, if I would have got to close, would be with a quote from a comedian, one of the most noteworthy worthy comedians that we've ever had, and they had in the 20th century, Groucho Marx. And this was his quote. Politics is the art of looking for trouble 
finding it everywhere, diagnosing it incorrectly, and applying the wrong remedies. Wow, Groucho, did you hit it on the head? That's that, all. That, 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 that you just said the secret that's word. Right. <laughs> that, that, that's a home run. That was a home run. Mm. If that isn't the case, it, it's like, okay, if, they, if that isn't the perfect you know, the description of politicians. And, you know, and I, I was glad to see people call them what they are. You know, they're not representatives of people, and they are monarchs, as you said. You know, we do have a monarchy. You know, they've forgotten that they are our representatives, they are our agents, and they are accountable to us, and that they have a fiduciary responsibility to spend our money in our best interest. Not the best interest of of, of uh, people who are getting contracts from the mayor or, or people who are building housing units. It's to spend your money in the best possible way for us. And I will tell you this, I didn't get a chance to say this, but this was part of last night. I wanna go on record is I pay my taxes for fire, police, DPW, and services. Why is it when they continue to say that we should run the city like a business, what business have you ever walked into where they tell you what you want? If I go to a, if I go into a, if I go into to buy a suit and I tell the guy, I want a navy blue suit, and the guy goes, oh, kiss my ass, you could have a, you're gonna have a brown suit. It's like, well, guess what, I'm not gonna buy the suit. If I go to an ice cream parlor and I say, I want chocolate ice cream, and the guy goes, no, you can't have it, you're gonna have vanilla, how long are they gonna stay in business? We continue to hear, we continue to hear how this has gotta be run like a business. Well, number one, this is a non-profit business, if it is a business. And the people, the consumer, is you and I. We are the consumers. And as the consumers, we should have a right to select what we buy with our money. And when the monarchs forget that we should tell them what we want, not vice versa, it's time in November to get the giant push broom out and sweep them all downstream. Well, you know, Chip, uh, I, I gave my citizens input yesterday, but I had another meeting to go to um, over on Columbia Street. Uh, a new organization is forming here in Fall River uh, called the Toastmasters, um, which kind of teaches you how to, you know, give speeches and, you know, be more clear and your whatnot. And I saw some people there that I knew. Um, and the one thing I said to them was, but you know, you really need to move the, da the date of your meeting because it's on the day of city council meetings. <laughs> the people who need it most are, are sitting at the city council chamber. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, it, they're, you know, they seem to be an excellent organization. They're having another meeting in two weeks. Um, I believe it's the 23rd. And you know, I suggest people go down there. It's at 630, just, just listen to what they have to say. Maybe, maybe it's for you, maybe it's not. But, you know, that's, that's a possible outcome for some of these people who are running for office, for people who are community activists, for our neighborhood leaders to go to not only network, but to improve themselves and their speaking skills, because we've heard a few of them. Believe it or not, Chip, we're at the end of the show. <laughs> well, well, one thing about us, we don't have any problem being very clear when we talk. As a matter of fact, we get a lot of heat because of it, but <laughs> guess what? Join the revolution, That's November. It. Get them all out of there. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you on Friday.